The Downton Abbey number two is definitely gathering momentum. Hey! Hello! How, how is everyone? Well, you might notice that we have changed today. There are two other people here as opposed to Harriet and Sherry. Now, Harriet is uh, rehearsing today because she opened last night in her show, so she's unable to be here today. And Sherry has lost her internet because she's moving. Yes. So we are joined by the gorgeous Linda Lusardi and the wonderful Dr. Tracy Mountford, who have become our panelists for the day, and we are thrilled to have them here. Well, I didn't know that you had to have a cup of tea to be in this show. You could have told me. You well, no, mine's, mine's <laughs> coffee, actually. Mine's coffee, actually, darling. Oh. Or something stronger, Linda. Yeah. 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 So, Dee, what have That's you been true. doing over the last few days? Anything exciting? Yes, I've been doing lots of exciting things. And the big exciting news is it, we may have found a dog. Oh. <laughs> That's through Debbie, of course. So I'm yes. telling you guys. Um, I keep having being offered rescues um, from the Blue Cross. And, and then suddenly the parents say, oh, no, we're going to keep the dog. So this has happened oh. two or three times. And then suddenly, Debbie, you found online this wonderful dog but we're just waiting with bated breath to see if it's going to happen and i just pray it's going to happen and um you what, know, what kind of dog what kind of dog it's actually it? it's a cocker a cocker spaniel oh so lovely and apparently they are really beautiful dogs i mean beautifully natured dogs and um it, it's I mean, I, I almost don't want to get my hopes up, but I keep looking at pictures of Cocker Spaniels and reading about them. And, and I'm really excited because my daughter and my grandchildren have got a, a lovely, lovely Labrador called Millie. And so, you know, when I go over there, I, I take this Cocker Spaniel uh, to, for her to play with. And, and I mean, I think, it, you know, you have to have an animal because I think animals are so important for, on so many levels. You haven't got one no. at the moment, have you, Linda? You haven't got a dog either. No, my dog died just after I got out of hospital from oh. COVID. Oh, no. And she How was, old was your dog? He was only five um, and he oh, woke no. up paralysed and we had a week of him having operations and then they said he'd actually got some um, disease in his spinal cord and he would, oh, the para, oh, because I, no. I was willing to put wheels on him, I was willing to do anything to get him home. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely, he was my baby. Um, yes. they now it's traveling upwards and he's, it lends up that his lungs won't work. So we had to put oh, him no. down. So, um, oh, everything really... else we've been through, we had to then put our dog down. But oh, he's, still here. he's still here. I'm quite spiritual and I do see him out the corner of my eye and I can yes. feel him. So I do think he's still here with us. Oh, um, well, I believe that actually, because my grandparents, I remember, had a Great Dane and it was, he was very, very old. I think he was about 15 or 16 when he died. And they very told old. me that in the middle of the night, they heard the clomp, clomp, clomp of, of his <laughs> paws down the, the, the passageway. And I believe that actually, I believe that they, they're still around. I um, I remember um, I, uh, Matthew Kelly's a, a friend of ours and um, he was going away on tour and he let us, because uh, I was on Bournemouth Pier, he said, take my house. And Lucy, I think she was about 18 months. She kept going, doggy, doggy, all the time in the corner. And I said, there's no dog there, Lucy. And um, then yeah. Matthew came back and I said, did you used to have a dog? And sh he said, yeah, his, his bed used to be over there in that corner. Wow. How That's weird so is that? Weird. Yeah, I Lucy believe in all that, you know. Um, yeah, people yeah. laugh at you, don't they? But it's true. And by mm. the way, did you say Bournemouth Pier, Linda? Yes. I did my first job there. Did no you? No sex, please, we're British. Oh, I my that How funny, but now, Tracy. What have you been watching? Oh, and what I to watch Wednesday? This is my favourite bit. Uh, what to watch <laughs> Wednesday? There's something that's worth watching. BBC One. Um, it was it's a rerun, but it, it's an old show. But it's called Cardinal. Do you know? Have any of you seen it? No. no. It, it's, it's about John. It's called Cardinal. It's a detective thriller series. It's got um, Billy Campbell in it, who's a brilliant actor, um, a really good actor, and, a, and a, somebody I've never seen before called Kareen Vaness. It's shot in Canada. It's, wow. It runs for a numerous series, and it's six, you know, six episodes to every series, and they wrap it up at the end of every six episodes, which is great. So you get to the end really quickly. Really good. Murder, mystery. 
developing Ooh. the relationship between him and her. Watch it again. It's really, really good. Really interesting Fabulous. how they get, get the naughty man. <gasps> at the end. Or a naughty woman, as the case may be. Yeah. What about you, Linda? What have you been watching? Well, I've taken years to catch up on... Um, Sopranos. I was the only one in the world that hadn't seen it. <laughs> so I have actually just done, well, we're, we're approaching the end of the whole thing. And there's six series and each series got like 20 episodes. So we've been just binge watching for the last three weeks. And I don't know if you, have you all seen it? No, I haven't seen no. it. No. Honestly, it is brilliant. And I'm, I'm so sad that the, the main actor in it, um, I can't think of his name now, but he actually died of a heart attack, but he's absolutely yes. brilliant. And it is all about um, the mafia, but yes. it's not all death. It's about the family unit and how they deal with him having a job like that and the family and the teenage son. And, but it's just, you get so involved in it. And like, we keep going, should we do another one? Do another? And we've been to <laughs> talk in the morning we're watching <laughs> them. Um, yes. <laughs> what about you, Dee? Yeah. Well, I actually watched The Secret again, um, and it's about the law of attraction. Because recently I've been thinking, I must get back to that, because certain things happened in my life that I know, I know that, you know, be careful what you wish for. I, I knew I'd thought about and made happen. But it's like trusting in that. And sometimes you don't trust and you get worried. And I, you know, sometimes I get anxious and I think, oh, no, that can't happen. And then I think, no, come on, pull yourself together you know, it's going to be all right. So I thought I just wanted that sort of re reaffirmation that this does work. You know, the universe listens to you. So I watched The Old Secret, and then my daughter told me that there's a new secret called Dare to Dream, which actually I watched. And they, what's good about it is they don't push home the secret or law of attraction, but they just display it in the, in the storyline about how this woman goes from, you know, having nothing, no money, and then... Obviously, I won't tell you the ending, but it's it's a very positive film. I, I watched The Secret many years ago, and I couldn't bear it. That you know, when she spoke, that it opens up. Here I am on a beach somewhere, and it was a voiceover like that. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Go at, I thought, oh my god, do I have to listen to this? Yeah, I really yeah. do. But actually, our guest and I have a connection with the secret. We 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 both we both met somebody who was in it. That's that's Leslie. But that's that's in a minute. So we're talking about that. But what I did was what I've watched this week is I watched uh, some uh, Carol Lombard and Clark Gable on on uh, the, the the documentary about their love life. Uh, I didn't oh, actually I know that. that too. I did you watch it? Wasn't it fascinating? Oh, wasn't it sad? Yeah, I oh. we she died in the plane crash. No, and also she died oh. in the plane crash because she wanted to get back because he was making a movie and she was jealous of the actress Lana Turner that he was oh. working with. So she was so desperate to no. get back to him that she got a plane back when she shouldn't have done and it crashed and it killed her. Oh my God, that's really bad. And did he end up with Lana Turner? No. <laughs> no. no. So all those anxieties and fears she had... There you um, go. And, and, and so much so, he loved her so much, didn't he, Linda? Yeah. That even after marrying twice after twice. she died, he was buried with her. Yeah. Oh, oh, my goodness. And I thought, how wonderful that the, the new wife would, would let him do that. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah, that's true. That's bad. I, I know, know, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, he probably, had this big, he probably had this big thing, you know, whatever happens, I want to die next to Carol. Yeah. Yes. How old was that's she true. when she died? How old was she? Oh, 30s. Oh, really young. Yeah. 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 That's really, really so bad. bad. So, Tracy, Tracy, you have nearly killed me this week. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Uh, Are we going to talk about your arms, Debbie? What's she done you to you? Tell them what you've done to me. Well, there's this, um, as you probably all know, I mean, there's been TV programs on it. There was another TV program on things last night about this what we can do to our bodies to improve, I mean, we all should be looking after ourselves or if we want to um, work out in the gym. But we talked about this treatment a couple of, of episodes ago or a few episodes ago called M-Sculpt, yes. which is a way of not toning. I think that gives the wrong impression. Hypertrophying muscle, meaning really, really making muscle um, bulk, but not bulk like the Hulk, but bulk in as much as redefine and recontour our bodies. So this is an electromagnetic this, uh, device. This isn't quackery. 
this has got proper studies to prove it works, not something that's just sort of uh, appeared on the market. It's huge in the USA, it's enormous. A lot of the celebrities do it in the USA. Uh, it's very big across Europe now. And what it's using is electromagnetic energy. So it's a, 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 in effect a, a magnet, electromagnetic magnet, that actually causes a muscle to bulk up. And in areas where us as females, I mean, it's great for men, but for women where we want to get more tone, more contouring, arms being one of those areas, because even if we exercise our triceps, I don't know about you girls, I spent ages in the gym trying to get my flobby triceps to do something. They never really respond. Never. Um, actually, it's really, really good for that. So it really hypertrophies the muscle and gives more arm definition. It can be used on the abs. It's really good for abs. Brings in the waist. Very good for butts if that's your one. That isn't really my thing that really interests me but it's great for abs great for arms you can even do it for calves people you know there's really really thin little calves but debbie had her first treatment so i'm sure you enjoyed it debbie how did you find it i came out of there and i felt like the incredible hulk i really did. <laughs> the, the, the treatment itself is weird as, as you said it's it weird. weird it's like no feeling you've ever felt before i can promise okay. you it's not, i thought it would be like slender turn on speed but it's kind of like, it's nothing like that. Nice. It's like tingly and weird. And then your arms move by themselves. It's kind of like <laughs> someone's <laughs> taking you over. And then I didn't realize until I came out, what all I wanted to do was stretch. And I wanted to, I, I almost wanted to go to a gym to start doing weights. Stretch I felt so strong when I came right. out. Of that. And, what, and what is it? Is it like a pad that goes up yeah. and down? Yeah. It's it's a, a, it's a, a, yes, it is. I mean, what we'll do, we'll try and get some, something to show because it's really interesting to show it. It literally yeah. is a big plate that's sort of strapped onto the arm. It's a big piece of kit. And you Fabulous. just literally lie there. And, and I was going to say relax. I don't need to relax, <laughs> did it? And oh, it goes oh. through a sequence of treatments. It's nothing like, it's nothing like slender tone, toning, no, nothing like that. It's a unique feeling. You would never experienced anything. I don't, I wouldn't say it's painful. It's weird. It is weird. I've had my abs done and actually it's very easy on the abs. It's easy, but it's, it really works. So you do a course of four, sometimes we do six. And you should really be able to see an improvement in the contouring of the arms. I let you know. I, I, watch the yes. face. I can see a and, difference already, actually. And how, <laughs> long, how long do the results last? That's really good because we all know you have to maintain this stuff. But actually, normally we recommend a, a top-up treatment every three to four months. So you don't, but so it lasts longer than the gym. We all know what the gym's like. Two weeks of a holiday, we haven't been to the gym. Yeah. And we feel like we're back to square one. But actually, you retain that muscle hypertrophy, as you call it, throughout that time. You just top it up. The other interesting thing is when it's done on the abs, you can actually put this setting on the arms as well. You get up to, I think it's something like up to 19% reduction in fat as well. Wow. So it's up to well, well, watch this space. And I, sh I should so watch it. Like Anyway, yes. now I am more excited than I have been for a long, long time because we have in our nest, who is flying in right now, one of my best friends in the universe, the gorgeous, fantastic, super talented, and super hilarious, Leslie Nickel. Hello, Les! Hello! Hi! Hello. Hi. Oh, Lucy! Oh, hello. Where are you? Oh, hello, Debbie! Oh, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> I bloody love you, Debbie! <laughs> hello! Hi! Hi. Love your hair, darling! Oh, that's what I've done yesterday. Love the colour. Thank you for and noticing. The, the, the thing is, the reason that Leslie came in like that is because for many years, talking on Spy, Spike, Skype, when you, <laughs> lived in, <laughs> when you lived in LA, I could only ever see your nose or your ear or your foot. Yes. Um, my husband has a name for it. I, I don't know if it's a real name, but he calls me a, a gufty. Gufty means technically challenged. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and it's true. That. So yeah. Leslie, it's so lovely to have you back in the UK. We Thank met you. many, 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 many years ago, and we have been through a lot together. That's oh, all yes. I can say. We oh, couldn't yes. even we couldn't even begin to start. Not long enough. No, not no. not long enough program. But it's so fantastic that you are home now. I'm so excited. Thank what you. is it? What, how do you feel being back? Um, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. Oh. Um, I, I was in LA for well on and off for eight but may we we stayed there for five years just literally five years 
And I would, I don't regret it for a minute. I mean, I worked there and I'm still doing voices for, for the US. That will continue, so that's great. Um, but I'd, be, I'd been starting to get a bit twitchy about home, about friends, about things that you, you figure out what really matters. And then, of course, yeah. this all hit us, didn't it? Yeah. And that yeah. sharpens your mind like nothing else. And then I realized it's something my darling old dad used to say. He used to say, your, your happiness is not dependent, in his opinion, and I agree, your happiness is not dependent on the view out of the window. It's dependent on your human relationships. And I think that's spot on. It is for me in any way. It's not, it's not for somebody who loves to be on their own. But yeah, we had a pool. We had a lovely house. But that's not it. And so when no. the world started going mad, I thought, well, if it's all going mad, I'd rather be with my own people. So were you in lockdown in LA or in England? Yeah. Oh, you no, were? In, um, we came here in July. So oh. we, we had a good few months of it, yeah. And yeah. then it got worse and worse. And it got worse in terms of the coronavirus. It got worse because mm. people weren't really following the rules. And then God. the good old president was driving you nuts, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not good. I mean, I, 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 I know it is when, when you want to be with your with your people. I can fully understand that. And of course, what most of us did in lockdown, well, a lot of us did, was either eat too much or drink too much or a combination of, of <laughs> both. And I'm, I'm really intrigued because being the character you are in Delta, I've got to ask you the big question. Are you a cook? Oh, <laughs> no. The lady that is, at home that does That's cooking. absolutely the question, Tracy, that's come from day one. It's <laughs> the, like, the first thing anybody ever asked, and they still do. And for a good six, maybe years, five years, I would say no, because Debbie knows I was not, <laughs> nor is she, may I say. Um, <laughs> we were non-cooks together. But then I married somebody who was a good cook, and so I totally gave up even trying. And ate his food and loved it. And then I had a bit of a light bulb moment in LA where um, a, a friend of mine who runs a charity called Animals Asia, which I'm an ambassador for with Peter Egan um, in China and Vietnam, she rescues moon bears. And Jill came over to LA and she said, listen, I'm going to a farm sanctuary. Do you want to come? And I said, oh yeah, what's that? She went, oh, you just get to pet animals. You'll love it. And I said, Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Canny old cow. So um, she knew what she was doing. So, of course, what you do is you go and, and it's, in fact, animals that have been rescued from slaughter or uh, they were on their way to slaughter or they've been rescued from horrible, you know, backyard farm where they're trying to make cheap meat. I mean, they've either been headed for terrible circumstances or they've been rescued yeah. from terrible yeah. circumstances oh. and so what you do is you do go up and you cu cuddle these animals and whilst you're doing that so I was on the floor with Sophie the pig rubbing oh. her belly I've never been near a pig yeah. she yeah. was adorable and the lady was telling me what what was about to happen to Sophie before they managed to rescue her yeah and that's what happens each and every time you go to an animal they explain to you the reality the truth about what's behind this and all I can tell you is because I have two dogs that I adore I suddenly they were no different I couldn't see them as anything different from my dogs Lovely. so a uh, so vegan happened so so in answer wow. to Jim, sorry long-winded answer um I've been to vegan cooking classes now <laughs> have oh, you because my husband isn't vegan and if I don't I'll starve which might be no. a good thing. <laughs> how are you getting on yeah how are you getting on not bad I mean, you soon soon figure out what's nice and what isn't. I mean, I'd make the most killer uh, vegan chocolate cake, which really? isn't really a great thing, because as Tracy said, there's a lot Ooh. of, of fat going I, I, on. Um, I was vegan for about two months, because... <laughs> oh, well, Linda. But I just couldn't keep it up, honestly. Every time you made a meal, you had to go to the supermarket and get so many different ingredients. No, honestly, darling, you get... You honestly... Do you know what? When I went to the classes, Chef Ron, as he was called. <laughs> Chef, yes. Chef Ron at Sun Cafe, Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. He said, listen, just find 10 simple dishes, not ones yeah. with, he's really big on this. Don't have things that have got 47 ingredients. No. Find yes. something with one pot with a handful of things that you probably have in the fridge anyway. Find out 10 that you really like, and then it takes the stress out of it. So you can always right. go, do you know what? I haven't got time to do this tonight. I want something yeah. that takes 15 minutes. 
Once Brilliant. you figure that out, Linda, then it's much less stressful. I've got some really good news for you, Leslie. Uh -huh. Is that we are sponsored by a company called Wines with Stories, and they have vegan wine. Yes. Oh, now you're talking. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> so we will be sending you some. I need what details. Is, so, what is we it? No, 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 no. We'll be sending you some to say thank you for coming on the show. So we'll send you. Their lovely mm -hmm. vegan wine. Sorry, sorry, Linda. What would you do? Want to ask uh, Leslie? Oh, I, I want to ask Leslie. In fact, it's lovely, lovely to meet you. I'm a real Downton fan. Um, too, but, um, I know your husband's a martial arts artist and a spiritual healer. Yes. Um, so does he do it over Skype or over Zoom? This <laughs> spiritual healing through all the lockdown. Um, oh, it's a very good question. Well, actually, he hasn't been doing that. I mean, what what he he did some in LA and he did a lot more here. What happened in LA was the martial artist work took over because he he there was a dojo in the place that we lived and he's quite high level in his particular he's a ninjutsu master um, and oh. and so he was a bit of a rarity and so he was very popular so a lot of his time was taken teaching the people there I mean as far as I mean uh, his his healing work you'd have to, we'd have to ask him. <laughs> Yeah, I can easily um, ask him that for you, of course. Yeah. Thank you. And also, Leslie, I have to say that we're all really fascinated by, uh, you, you know, you've, you're having a great career. And we want to know, is there any sort of um, news on the next movie or what you're doing next? Can you tell us? Well, uh, two things I can say for sure. Um, the Downton Abbey number two is definitely gathering momentum um i can't Ooh. tell you a, i haven't seen a script but i believe there is one um right and you know what it is actors we always are the last to know the details and we haven't yes. been contracted yet but i yes. firmly believe there's a very very strong intention to get this moving the beginning of next yes. year so that's oh, very exciting fun. we're very yeah. happy about that very and the other thing is i i when i was in america one of the best things that happened to me was I got to know and love a wonderful American songwriter called Mark Muller. I mean, he's a fantastically successful guy. He's done a ton of pop music. You know, he's got a wall full of gold discs, you know, right. all of that. Um, he also wrote the, the theme tune to DuckTales. That's a kind of random weird fact. You know, DuckTales, wow. or ha ha. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Which has been re recorded by everybody in the world. But that's by the by. So, anyway, it's quite a long story. I'll truncate it in that I said to him one day because I just met him socially and I said you know I, I fancy doing something but I don't know what it is and, and it's um, with music probably not not cabaret because I can sing and I've sung in shows but I'm not Bernadette Peters you know so yes yes I want to do something I can do anyway right. long story short he said we were at a wedding and he was drunk and he said I'm drunk I'm going to talk to you about this tomorrow so he came around my house the next day and cut long story short about nine months later we'd written the show and, we'd, and he's written oh. me 10 songs 10 original wow. songs and i kid you not they're blooming brilliant oh how bad they're, they're brilliant and so uh, it's called how the hell did i get here right <laughs> so technically it's about me but we very very definitely wanted it to be about all of us so that when yeah. and we've tried it out a little bit here and there and, and it seems to be on the right track because well, afterwards people want to talk to me, but not about me. They want yeah, to say, no, no, no. you know, when you said that about your mother, well, bugger me. You know, da, 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 da. And that is what it's supposed to do. As you watch oh. this unfold, it yeah. invites you to have a think about your own stuff. Because at the end of it, I say, thing is, we're all on the same road, just with different bumps. Yeah. That's How kind of lovely. Oh, so we wow. were to do it in Chicago. We were booked for a month in Chicago all of July and of course yes. it was postponed. So no, we have a producer no. working on it for next year. Oh, that's well, that's good. huge congratulations. That sounds amazing. Thanks, Watch the space. Yeah. Definitely, we will be. Thank yeah. you. Oh, so I'm so excited you're back, Les, and I still haven't seen you to give you a real life snuggle. I know. You, you, and, Sheila, you, and, you and Sheila Showbiz. Oh, Sheila. Oh. Sheila's <laughs> next door. Do you want to say hello to Sheila? Oh, yeah. Sure, yeah. Get yeah. Sheila. <laughs> Sheila. And where are the boys? Where are the boys? The boys are out on a walk. I thought it was best. Because they'd, they'd be giving it large. I wanted oh. to meet a 75-year-old martial artist with his with his earrings. He's got earrings. 
He's got wow. yellow tail. When did he start oh. getting yellow? Los Angeles, Debbie, what can you do? LA, exactly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, where are you? Say hello. Look in there, that's where the camera is. Oh, yeah. Hey! hey. <laughs> you've, got hello. Your, you've got earrings in. Yeah, put your face yes. in. Yes, yeah. I've got uh, a. He's gone a bit. Rock star earrings. Rock Oh my God! Wow. What did you What did you do to his foot? Oh, you bashed it when he was training. Yeah. Oh, it's gone a bit wonky. But it's you, Miss Debbie Arnold. Thank you very much. That was responsible for us meeting, and oh. we didn't meet till he was fifty nine and I was fifty something. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've been very happy ever since. When When he proposed, I remember her saying to me, um, "Oh, we'll do this in a couple of years." Oh, in a couple of years. Can I get married now? I dragged them and went round to her house immediately. Yeah, it happened in six weeks once we got that sorted. It, do you remember when he, you proposed? I made you do it three times because he laughed the first time. Yeah, I laughed. <laughs> the third time he did it, he had a little bit of a tear in his eye. And I thought, oh, that's good. Oh, that's, that's the one. Keep that's that one. the one. That was that's the right the one. one. Oh, that is really, really nice. nice. Okay. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Les, Les, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's been, it's been a brilliant, brilliant right. afternoon. I will call you later and we'll get together very soon. All I can't right. wait to see you. Thank you. Welcome back. All right, all. darling. Bye, Bye, darling. Love you. Bye. 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 Oh, wasn't Bye. that really romantic? She's such a lovely Bye. lady and her proposal story was gorgeous. My husband proposed over a takeaway pizza. And oh. I always hoped one day, he, you know, he might redo it somehow it was just so nothing but i don't know you know but her story was so sweet was like, what about oh, you lovely. what was your proposal like uh, um because we had lucy first and actually i was on bournemouth pier and <laughs> oh, we had, um, her christened in bournemouth and um during the speech sort of we were at the top table during all the the sort of thank yous um sam got up and got on one knee in front of everybody and proposed oh. Oh, that's yeah. so it's amazing. That's very romantic. Oh, oh. Well, when I when when John when I was married to John Chalice, the first proposal I had was um, well, I suppose I'm going to have to marry you because nobody else would want you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's a bit similar to my one actually, <laughs> and it was after a first night, and we were it was very, everyone was very drunk, especially the person I was going to marry who was just about to propose. He said about the same thing, like. Oh well, let's go. Let's do it then, eh? And it was that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, yeah, all right, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so like, honestly, I just I would like to meet someone. I mean, it's very interesting now because normally we've got the four of us and all of us are single, but now we have two married ladies here. You see, two no normal married people. Normal people, I, I just, yeah. yeah I'm sorry to call you normal. I didn't mean to insult you both. But, uh, <laughs> Not ordinary, uh, Leslie, but normal. And, and Leslie married as well. I, I would like to be in a nice relationship with somebody, because Linda Regan was on uh, a few days ago and she was saying how much she loved her husband, how, yes. how much she, she was very seriously ill. She just didn't want to die because she wanted to live for him. And I thought, That's oh, amazing. I want to feel like that. I'd want to feel like that again. And you yeah. should, Debbie. You should, because you but deserve to, Debbie. Debbie. Do you want me to put my feelers out, Debbie? Oh, Linda, I didn't think you felt that way about me. What do you mean for a man? Yeah. <laughs> I've got oh. one in mind already. So honestly, Linda, I absolutely would love that. Okay. All right. Ooh. For that reason, we're going to close the show now. Yeah. Can I speak to Linda? We'll have Goodbye, a chat everyone. afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me at short notice. <laughs>